Hello everyone, Neon Jigglypuff here, and welcome to another Top 5 video. Today's Top 5 is going to be my Top 5 Favorite Mario Characters of All Time. But before we get to the list, let me lay out a few rules first. So in this list, I'm only going to be counting characters who made their debut in Mario games. Which means that characters who debuted in Donkey Kong Country, Wario Land, and WarioWare, or Yoshi's Island will not be on this list. And these are characters like King K. Rool, Jimmy T, or Toady. However, Yoshi, Wario, and Donkey Kong might be on this list because they made their debut as Mario characters. So they count. So some other characters who won't be on this list are the rabid counterparts from Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And the reason for that is simply because they're not actual Mario characters, they're rabbids dressed as Mario characters. So in this list, they won't count for that reason. So without further ado, let's move on to my fifth favorite Mario character of all time. So here we are at number five, and it is none other than Donkey Kong. Now the reason why I love Donkey Kong so much is because, fun fact about me, Donkey Kong 64 was the first video game I've ever played in my life. And when I played Donkey Kong 64 for the first time, I was instantly clicked not only the game, but the game's main character, Donkey Kong. Because when I was a kid, my favorite animal was a gorilla, and Donkey Kong was none other than a gorilla. So you put two and two together, and Kid Me naturally fell in love with this character. He's so full of personality and charm, especially modern Donkey Kong, because uh, back then he didn't really have much of a personality, but now he's very expressive and very, very full of personality. And what I love about Donkey Kong the most is that he's big, strong, and tough, but at the same time, he's also caring and has a big heart, and he loves his family and friends. He also loves bananas, like he goes crazy for him, him and all the cons. But let's get into a little story on why I love Donkey Kong so much and why I still love him to this day. Because my family would always play Mario Party and Mario Party 2 for family game night, and when I found out that Donkey Kong was actually part of the game, I went crazy. Sure, at the time I was too young to actually play those games properly and actually know how to do it, so I just sat back and watched, and my family always put DK as the CPU and I would pretend that it was me playing. And Donkey Kong is still to this day my go-to Mario Party character, and that's likely to never change. With that all said, let's move on to number four. Now this is a Mario character I don't see a lot of people talking about, and it's honestly surprising to me because he's so full of personality and he's such a good... I don't know what to call it. Is he a villain? Is he an ally? Because really, his roles in all the games are very mixed. Sometimes he's a villain, other times he's a possessed villain, other times he's just, you know, doing his thing. But let's get down to the reason why I love this character so much. Now, P.D. Piranha made his first appearance in a video game in Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. And as a kid, I was always afraid of Bowser and Mario Party, but P.D. Piranha, despite being a lot scarier, I was never afraid of him. In fact, as a kid, I've always liked the regular piranha plants, but P.D. Piranha really took the cake for me because not only is he a piranha plant, but he's a big piranha plant with an actual name, meaning that he's an actual character, and he has his own set of attacks and a personality. I mean, yeah, at first glance he might look like a giant feral piranha plant monster, and while that is true for the mainline games like Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Bros. DS, in the sports games, especially in Mario Power Tennis, PD Piranha is so full of charm and personality, he really feels like a person rather than a monster. And that's why I love him so much, he is such a cool character. And one of his main attacks is actually puking. Yeah, that's, that's really weird, but hey, I still like the guy. And the one thing I'm the most happy about is that Piranha Plant didn't end up dying out like 
the next character on this list. Number three, which is... Okay, so first things first, I really, really miss Koopa Kid. Now, I wish he would appear in more games again, but unfortunately, his only use was for Mario Party, and he also died in Mario Party. It's weird, he was born in Mario Party, and he died in Mario Party. But despite being such an obscure character in the Mario universe, I still can't help but to love the little guy, and honestly, I don't exactly know why. I mean, all he really is is a miniature version of Bowser. In fact, they're not even related. Sure, in Mario Party 4, he would prefer to Bowser as his dad, but in other games, he would always prefer to Bowser as Master Bowser or Mr. Bowser or Sir Bowser. But basically, to clear up any confusion, no, Koopa Kid is not Bowser's son. He's just a child who looks like Bowser that he took under his wing and trained him to be as evil as himself. Basically, Bowser is his mentor. But I don't care what any of you say, I like Koopa Kid a million times more than Bowser Jr. In fact, I hate Bowser Jr. because he was the one who replaced Koopa Kid in the Mario series. Sure, Koopa Kid would only appear in Mario Party games, but ever since Bowser Jr. came along in Super Mario Sunshine, he slowly started to fade away until they started to use Bowser Jr. in Mario Party. But enough of the little backstory of Koopa Kid, let's get into why I like Koopa Kid other than his design. First of all, Koopa Kid is very, very much like Bowser, and I already like Bowser as a character enough as it is, but Koopa Kid, in a way, is actually smarter than Bowser and is actually the one guiding him sometimes. Bowser can get a little ahead of himself and his plans aren't always foolproof, and he's just straight up goofy sometimes. And because of that, Koopa Kid is the one ending up having to tell Bowser that his plan is, well, not that smart. But since Koopa Kid is the student and Bowser is the mentor, he doesn't listen to Koopa Kid's warnings, and they end up failing at the end. But, despite all of that, Koopa Kid still remained loyal to Bowser for all of those years, and that's what I like about him. And while the chances are pretty much slim to none, I still hope to see him again in a future game, even if it's just a small cameo. And that's pretty much all I have to say and all I really can say about Koopa Kid, because he hasn't appeared in a lot of games, and there's not really much to go off of. So as quick as we started, we're going to be moving on to number two, my second favorite Mario character of all time, which is... Okay, so this character might be a little strange since we just came from talking about Koopa Kid, but now we are on number two, Bowser. This might be a strange pick for all of you watching because I don't really talk about Bowser too much. But honestly, I really, really love Bowser. I've always liked Bowser, except for when I was a little kid playing Mario Party 3 and 4. Admittedly, I was pretty scared of Bowser. Every single time someone would land on a Bowser's face, I would always hide my face because I was scared of Bowser. But over the years, I grew to like him, and that is because of Paper Mario. See, Paper Mario was a series that gave Bowser a really interesting personality. Beforehand, he was just a regular monster villain who would kidnap Princess Peach, and that's really all he would do. But in the Paper Mario games, and the other RPG games like Super Mario RPG and Mario & Luigi series, Bowser became less of a monster and more of an actual person with a personality. And that's what I really like about Bowser. Now that is the Bowser that I love. Sure, he's supposed to be a villain, and that's true, he is a villain. I also like the goofy side of Bowser. 
But let's get into the more villainous side of Bowser. So while I do love the goofy Bowser, the evil Bowser is a lot cooler, especially in the first Paper Mario game on the N64. Now that Bowser was a force to be reckoned with. In that game, he wins from the very beginning. He defeats Mario and kidnaps not only Princess Peach, but her entire castle and lifts it into the sky. And he pretty much has control over a majority of the game. He's a true villain in that game, and I love that. Like, sure, he's supposed to be a villain and all, but Super Mario Sunshine really did show his softer side and how he really does care about his son, Bowser Jr., the Prince of Koopa Kingdom. And sometimes Bowser even helps Mario and Princess Peach on their adventures. But overall, the reason why I like Bowser so much is mainly because of his design. I really, really like him. Apparently, he was originally based off of an ox, which at first is kind of hard to see, but when you compare this picture to this picture, you can really see a resemblance. So that's pretty much it for number two. But before we move on to number one, I want to bring up some honorable mentions. So without further ado... Honorable mentions time! So in no real order, we'll start off with Piranha Plant. I really like Piranha Plant, especially in childhood, but I only started to like him because of Smash Brothers, and there's already PD Piranha, so, you know, that's what kept him off the list. Wario. He almost made it on this list, very, very close, but when it comes down to it, I'd say he's number six. Gino. Again, he would have been on this list, but I wanted to keep it purely Mario, so I kept him out for that reason. Morton Koopa. He's my favorite Koopaling, and I think that he's really cool, but in my opinion, not cool enough to be on this list. King Boo, one of my favorite Mario villains of all time. If he were on the list, he'd probably be number 7 in a top 10 list. Shadow Mario. I really miss Shadow Mario, and I wish he were in more games, but unfortunately he was phased out. Nabbit. He's a pretty new Mario character, but he's very interesting, and I really do like Nabbit. Dry Bones. Sure, he's cool and all, but he's just a generic enemy, so that's kind of what kept him off this list. And last but not least, Toad. Now, as a kid, I really, really loved Toad. Around, like, 11 years old, he was, like, my absolute favorite character of all time. But over the years, I started to get a little tired and annoyed with him because of Paper Mario, where every NPC's a Toad, and that really just kind of killed him off for me. With that all said, let's finally move on to number one, my favorite Mario character of all time. And if you know me, you probably know who it is by now. But anyway, without further ado, Let's move on to number one. Now this is a character that either most of you or all of you were expecting to be number one. Waluigi! Yes, Waluigi is my favorite Mario character of all time. And there are many, many reasons for this. But let's get into them short and sweet because I don't want this to be dragging on for too long because I know it will. First, if you know me, you know that I always root for the underdog and Waluigi is quite literally the underling of all underlings. I mean, he is such an underused Mario character, and it's strange because he's always been shown off to be part of the main cast. I mean, he's always in all of the promotional art with all the other characters, and he is, in fact, part of the main Mario cast, yet out of all of them, he is the least used, even being used less than Daisy in some cases. And he is often depicted as being quite annoying and quite selfish and flat-out rude. 
But despite all of that, I love this man. Waluigi is the best Mario character to ever come out of anything, really. And it all comes down to his design. I like his lanky, hunched over posture, and I don't know why. And the color of his clothes, too, being purple. If you know me, then you know that purple is my favorite color of all time, and it's been that way since I was a kid. No, Waluigi did not influence that. Or maybe he did. I don't even know, but I've always liked Waluigi ever since I was a kid. So when it came to Mario Kart, I was always playing Waluigi. When it came to Mario Tennis, Waluigi. Waluigi is so goofy and so quirky and weird and just completely out of nowhere. I can't help but to like him. And all of his abilities and characteristics are usually one-offs, except for two of them. I've noticed that there are two reoccurring abilities in Waluigi's moveset. And that is a rose. He always pulls out a rose. And I don't know where he gets it from, but he always has a rose. And he also has a tendency to swim in the air as if there's water there. He's done that ever since Mario Power Tennis, and it's been a main thing since forever. He's always been associated with swimming in the air and roses. And I know there are tons of people saying Waluigi's irrelevant and that he'll never get anything and he'll never be anything and that people flat out hate him. But you know what? That doesn't bother me. I mean, you don't have to like Waluigi, but nothing anyone will say will ever change my mind. Waluigi is my favorite and it'll be like that forever. I love Waluigi and I will never not love Waluigi. And that is it for this top 5 list. I hope you guys enjoyed, I know I did, and if you enjoyed this list, leave a comment and tell me about it. But if you didn't enjoy this list, and you want to share your own opinions, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to know your opinions and your top 5 Mario characters, or even top 6 or top 10, whatever you please. But anyway, I'm glad you guys watched, thank you so much, and don't forget to leave a like if you did like the video. And with that all said, I will see you in the next video, which is... I don't know, but I'll see you there! Again, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all have an amazing day. See you later, guys. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to Neon Jigglypuff for more videos like these. And please, leave a fat thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed. And don't forget, Waluigi is number one! Wahahaha! <laughs>